and welcome back to EDH Deck Building. I am your host, Demo, and this is a funny, interesting video that I'm going to call 10 Cards I Hate So Much That I Forget That They Exist. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, I got the idea from one of my patrons when I was talking to them recently. I do Deck Doctors on my Patreon for my patrons, and of course, I do a lot of deck techs. I do them on my channel. I do my Underwhelming Commander series on my channel, and sometimes I will forget to put in cards that are obvious includes that work really, really great with that strategy that seem like really obvious fits. And the reason why I do is because they're cards that I just dislike so much that I've sort of blocked them out of my memory. It's to me, that's like they don't even exist. It doesn't even occur to me to include these cards in any deck that I make because I just have disliked them so much throughout my history of playing the format. And I think a lot of people will sympathize with what I'm talking about here. So for example, a while back, I made a Felice a deck on my channel great commander really interesting deck and i had a few people comment on that video hey where's cathar's crusade great fit in that deck and i'm like yeah you're right that's a great fit in a felisa deck and probably a lot of other decks as well i just don't put that card in deck so that's number 10 on my list here cathar's crusade three white white enchantment whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control really fantastic card and a lot of decks and it's just one of those cards that I hated so much when I first started playing I saw it everywhere it goes combo -y with a lot of cards a lot of people would just play it and then win the game very quickly after it hit the table I absolutely hated playing against this card and I'm just one of those guys that you know I'm not a hypocrite if I really hate playing against a card I'm not going to play that card myself and so when it comes to deck building whether it be for my own decks or for my patrons or for on my channel this card just doesn't occur to me I've sort of blocked it out of my mind to the point where I don't even think of it when I build decks, even though it is a fantastic include in a lot of decks that I make. Let's look at number nine, which is Mana Drain. Blue and a blue instant counter target spell. At the beginning of your next main phase, add an amount of colorless mana equal to the spell's mana value. And this one is a little bit different. It's one of those cards that you could just very easily put it in any deck, right? If you look at it compared to a counter spell, it's just a strict upgrade, right? Not only are you countering a spell for blue and a blue, but you're going to get a bunch of extra mana on your next turn as well. And that's kind of the reason why I never play this card and why I don't think of it. Yeah, you could put this in just about any blue deck. It's a strict upgrade from a counter spell, which I do play in a lot of decks. But this is just one of those cards that just rubs me the wrong way. And I think a lot of people know why. First of all, it is a very high powered card that when you play it, I think draws a little bit of ire from casual players. But more so, people don't use this as a counter spell typically, right? That's sort of the interesting thing about it. People use it as a ramp spell. That's why people play Mana Drain typically. If you have a Mana Drain in your hand, especially early in the game, you're not going to use it as a counter spell. You're going to use it just to get a bunch of mana so you can do a bunch of stuff, maybe cast your commander if it's really expensive. That's where this is actually a really good fit. And that's part of the reason why I just really dislike it because a lot of times people will just counter whatever, right? Typically your commander. I've had my commander countered by a mana drain so many times and it's not because people are fearing my commander. It's because they just want the mana on their main phase so that they can do a bunch of stuff that they have planned. So I think that's why why I dislike this card so much and why I avoid playing it or putting in decks because it's a card that people will just counter something that is important to you that they don't really care about because they just want the extra mana on their turn. I know maybe it's nitpicky. It's just one of those cards that rubs me the wrong way. Coming in at number eight is Perforos, God of the Forge. Three and a red, legendary enchantment creature, God, six, five, has indestructible as long as your devotion to red is less than five. Perforos isn't a creature. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Perforos deals two damage to each opponent and pay two and a red. Creatures you control get plus one, plus oh until end of turn. Now, the reason why I dislike this card so much is because I played against it as a commander, right? I've played against so many Perforos decks, especially when I started out in the format. And as you will see from this list, a lot of the cards on this list, I just came to really, really hate because in the beginnings of me playing commander, I saw them all the time. They're commander staples, especially back then they were really commander staples. And I always had to 
play against them, and that's what made me hate them, and I absolutely hated playing against Perforos decks. It's a really miserable deck to play against. The fact that their commander is a indestructible legendary enchantment that a lot of decks cannot deal with, and they just end up killing everyone really, really fast. This card is fantastic in a lot of decks, right? I have a few decks that this could probably be a good fit in. I just don't think of it, right? Whenever I'm building decks for my Underwhelming Commanders videos or whatever, I just don't think of this card because I hate it so much that I've just sort of put it out of my memory. It's a great card. It's a great commander, but it's also a fantastic card in the 99 of a lot of decks. And for me, I just loathe playing against Perforo so much that I just don't even think of it. Coming in at number seven is Aura Shards. One, a green and a white enchantment. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment. And again, just a very, very powerful card. Still sees a lot of play, but saw a lot more play back when I first started playing. And I just hated playing against this card. As I've said before on my channel, this is almost a stacks piece because as soon as your opponent plays an Aura Shards, basically what it means is you can't play artifacts and enchantments. That's basically what it comes down to because likely they're in a theme where they're going to have lots of creatures coming into play, probably token creatures. And whenever they do so, they'll just start picking off all their opponent's artifacts and enchantments. So basically when this card comes down, it's like none of your opponents are allowed to play artifacts and enchantments. Of course, that's incredibly powerful and it's a fantastic card in a commander game, but it's just such an awful card to play against that for me, it makes me not want to put it in my own decks. I just don't even think of it when I put my decks together. I have a Shanna deck where this is just an absolutely fantastic fit because that's a token theme and I just can't bring myself to put it in there because it's just one of those cards that just sort of feels really bad. Even though I'm a guy who really, really likes removal, this card almost feels like a stacks piece more than actual removal. Coming in at number six, another card that I've talked about quite a bit on my channel, Consecrated Sphinx 4 Blue Blue. Sphinx 4 6 with flying. Whenever an opponent draws a card, you may draw two cards. And again, I've talked about how, you know, when I first started playing commander this card was everywhere it was an auto include in everyone's blue deck and i don't see it as much anymore now people tell me that they still see this card all the time they still put it in all their blue decks i don't see it nearly as much as i used to i used to see this card in like every single commander game i played of course it's incredibly powerful so both for the combination of i saw it all the time and i'm sick of it and also the fact that it's a really powerful card makes me want to avoid it it falls a little bit into that category of it is just a removal magnet i find if you you play this card your opponents are going to want to go after it and get it off the table right away if they don't they're going to be in big trouble but it's one of those cards that in the beginnings of playing commander i saw it so frequently that i just can't stand i, I can't even stand the idea of seeing it onto the battlefield on my side of play so i just cannot bring myself to put this in a deck even if it's a great fit right even if you're in a deck where you have like draw triggers where this ability actually is playing into the synergy of your deck i still don't want to put it in there and speaking of which coming in at number five avenger of Zendikar. Five green green elemental. Five five. When Avenger of Zendikar enters the battlefield, create an 0-1 green plant creature token for each land you control and has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one plus one counter on each plant creature you control. So again, just like with Consecrated Sphinx, this is a card that everyone just shoehorned into all their green decks, no matter what they were doing. If you have a green deck, you put this in your green commander decks because it was just considered a phenomenal green commander staple and I avoided it for that reason. I will sometimes avoid cards that I just am sick and tired of seeing and this is far and away probably the card that is mostly the case when it comes to that where this card just leaves such a bad taste in my mouth because I saw it everywhere when I first started playing that I just don't even think of it when building decks even again if it really actually fits the theme of what I'm doing. Now this card unlike Consecrated Sphinx I think is actually a little overrated. People still shoehorn this into a lot of decks where it maybe doesn't belong. So I also kind of avoid it for that reason. But again, it's just a card that I don't even think of when building decks. By the way, I'm still waiting and I don't know how many people are out there that do this for the person that puts this in their plant tribal deck. If you just ignore that first ability and look at the second ability, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus one plus one counter on each plant creature you control. So this is actually a great fit in a plant tribal deck if anyone out there is actually doing that because it's going to put a plus one plus one counter on all your plants, not just the old one tokens you're making right so keep that in mind coming in at number four avacyn angel of hope five white 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 
Angel 8-8, Flying, Vigilance, Indestructible, other permanents you control have Indestructible. So this, unlike Perforos, is not a card that I hate because I played against lots of Avacyn decks. Now, I have played against Avacyn decks, and those decks aren't fun to play against, right? Typically, it's I play my Avacyn, and then I'm just board wipe, board wipe, board wipe. Everyone loses all their stuff, including I Armageddon and destroy everyone's lands except for mine. Not the funnest deck to play against ever, but this is a card that holds a special place in my heart as far as as hatred goes. I don't like this card, period, in any format. I've played against this card in Modern and I didn't like it. I don't think this card should have ever been printed. The fact that you are giving all of your stuff indestructible is a ridiculously busted ability. And then on top of that, Avacyn herself has indestructible. That's the part that I really don't like here. If you look at similar cards like this, typically they are going to be giving other things you control, hexproof or indestructible or whatever. You will rarely see a card that is giving itself indestructible or hexproof or whatever, and then all of your other permanents as well. The fact that Avacyn comes down and gives all of your permanents indestructible and then itself has indestructible really, really bugs me. I don't like that. The design of this card, I don't like. I haven't liked this card since the first moment I saw it. Even before I started playing Commander, I didn't like this card and I don't like it in a Commander game either. Obviously, you could throw this card in any deck, right? I have several decks with white. All of those decks could use an Avacyn and I could probably close out the game fairly easily after I played one, but I just really hate this card. This is one of the only cards on the list that I actually really, really hate. And I don't want to ever see in a commander game just because I think this card is too powerful all around. And it sort of makes the game unfun when it comes down because it makes your stuff immune to so many things, right? Removal, obviously. 90% of board wipes, 90% of removal are now completely obsolete and useless once an Avacyn comes down on the table. And I just really don't like that. Coming in at number three, Crater Hoof Behemoth. Again, another card I've talked about quite a bit on my channel. Of course, everyone's talked about it. It's a very popular card in the format. Five green, 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 beast, five, five with haste. When it enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and get plus X, plus X until end of turn where X is the number of creatures you control. So this is probably up there as one of the most popular win cons in the entire format. And of course, for that reason, I don't like it. Obviously, I could put this in a few decks that I have where it could be a win con. I could have put it in about a hundred different decks that I made on my channel as a win con. It's just such an easy win con if you're in a green deck that is even remotely a go wide strategy. It's why I don't like it. I don't like it because it is, for one, ubiquitous. In fact, I will purposely play inferior versions of Crater Hoof Behemoth in decks where a Crater Hoof Behemoth might be a better option just because I really don't like the card. I don't like to be a hypocrite. That's just me. It's really difficult to sit there and complain about how you hate losing to Crater Hoof Behemoth and then you end up putting it in decks and winning with it yourself. Kind of being a hypocrite there, right? And I don't like to be one. This is a card that absolutely for sure I am never going to play in any of my decks. I may have have put in this index on my channel. Maybe I've put it in patrons decks. For me, I would never put this card in one of my decks personally, just because I really don't like the card. And in the same vein, coming in at number two is Aetherflux Reservoir. Four mana artifact. Whenever you cast a spell, you gain one life for each spell you've cast this turn. And you can pay 50 life. Aetherflux Reservoir deals 50 damage to any target. So again, just like Craterhoof Behemoth, very similar in how I've lost a lot of games to this. Craterhoof and Aetherflux Reservoir were the two cards that for a long time I wish had gotten banned. I don't think that anymore. I'm okay with them in the format. I still think they're just not very fun win cons. So I would never play them. Aetherflux Reservoir in particular, I think is a very feel bad win con because you're probably going to just knock out one player with it. That's one of the reasons why I really dislike it. Craterhoof Behemoth is not as bad because probably you're going to end up knocking out all three players, maybe just shooting one person in the face and saying, hey, you're not allowed to play magic anymore. Kind of is a feel bad moment. Even for the person with the Aetherflux Reservoir, a lot of times it can be a feel bad moment where you're going to kill someone and you got to figure out who it's going to be and you kind of don't want to pick on anyone but you got to use it because it's your win con so you pick the person and it's just a feel bad moment all around i find this to be a generally feel bad card in most situations because typically you're not going to just win the game with this you're just going to knock out one player and i don't really love that again it's a card that i would never put in a deck i have a life gain deck right my patron of the 
Kitsune deck is a life gain deck that I could absolutely throw this in. Zero chance I'm going to be doing that. I would never touch this card with a 10 foot pole. I have disliked it ever since it first came out in Kaladesh. You can play it if you want. I don't think it should get banned. I definitely would not be upset if it did. I just don't really like it myself. I don't like really anything about it. Again, even the design of it, I don't really like. But speaking of design, <laughs> getting to my number one is just Planeswalkers in general. And again, this is something I've talked about quite a bit on my channel, I think. I think regular viewers of mine already know that I'm not a big fan of Planeswalkers. I never play them in my decks and I never include them in my decks that I make on my channel. And again, that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video. I make a lot of decks on my channel. I do a lot of Underwhelming Commanders videos, of course. And a lot of these cards would probably be fantastic includes in the decks that I make. This is not just a list of here's a bunch of cards I hate. These suck. You guys should stop playing them. Play them if you like. Absolutely play Planeswalkers if you like. I've always hated Planeswalkers ever since they first came into the game. I just don't like them as a card type, period. I don't like anything about them. I'm not going to go too much on a rant here, but just the entire concept of Planeswalkers in general, I don't like. And I know newer players who, for them, Planeswalkers have always been a thing. They probably don't understand, right? And a lot of older players who say that they don't like Planeswalkers, the newer players who have never played in Magic without Planeswalkers probably don't understand what we're talking about. And again, I don't want to get too much into it and why I don't like Planeswalkers. It just really changed the dynamic of the game and I didn't like that. Maybe it's a boycott type of thing for me. I don't know, but I just can't bring myself to play Planeswalkers in and in my decks because I just fundamentally don't like Planeswalkers in the game at all, even if those Planeswalkers are fantastic fits in the decks that I'm making. And again, I will have people comment, hey, this Planeswalker will work great in this deck that you just made. Yeah, I'm sure it will. Feel free to add it into your version. If I make decks on my channel, I am probably not going to be including Planeswalkers in there. I just don't even think of it. Again, I'm very unfamiliar with most Planeswalkers. I played against them quite a bit when I played Modern, so I was familiar with some of those. In Commander, you don't see them as much. I have a hatred for them, so if I ever see them on the table, I will probably immediately go after them. It's one of the reasons why I like having versatile removal. Is it irrational? It probably is. I probably have a little bit of an irrational hatred for Planeswalkers. Also, though, getting back to my history of the format, I played against a whole lot of Atraxas Super Friends decks in the beginnings of my Commander days, and man, that only made it worse. I already didn't like Planeswalkers in general, and playing against those Super Friends decks all the time only made it worse. Absolutely hated playing against them. So for me, again, it's just a personal subjective decision. I don't put Planeswalkers in my decks. I don't put them in the decks that I make for my channel. If you want to add in a Planeswalker that fits really good into one of the strategies of the decks that I make on my channel, feel free to do so. That's always the case with decks, right? For me, I don't play them because I don't like them. That's pretty much all it boils down to, but that is it. Why don't you guys comment below what are those cards that it just doesn't even occur to you to put them in a deck because you hate those cards so much. That's basically what I'm talking about here, right? I'm building a deck. There's a card that actually fits really good with the strategy I'm doing, but I loathe that card so much that it just doesn't even occur to me. It doesn't even register because I don't even think of it when building decks. Let me know in the comments below, but that is it for today and thanks for tuning in.